नमस्कार आदाब सत मैं हूं समीरा और स्वागत करती हूं आपका आपके अपने प्रोग्राम में जिसका नाम है हेल्थ प्लस दोस्तों जिंदगी में सुख और दुख आते जाते रहते हैं सुख आने पर तो हम बहुत खुश हो जाते हैं लेकिन दुख आते ही हम बहुत परेशान हो जाते हैं और सबसे ज्यादा परेशान हम तब होते हैं अगर घर में कोई शख्स बीमार हो जाए घर में किसी के बीमार होते ही हम पैनिक हो जाते हैं समझ ही नहीं पाते कि हम क्या करें और क्या ना करें तो हम अपने प्रोग्राम के जरिए आपको बताएंगे कि अगर कोई बीमारी से ग्रस्त हो जाए तो ऐसे में क्या करना है और क्या नहीं करना है और साथ ही आपको वो सारे प्रिकॉशंस भी बताएंगे जिससे कोई बीमारी का शिकार ही ना हो तो चलिए शुरू करते हैं अपना प्रोग्राम Uh, I'd like to start by saying that we all are here because we are somehow linked with the. That's the first change, and probably one of the reasons was that the term dementia itself is is sounds very demeaning. It it used to hold a kind of stigma to it. Uh, so you know, if you want to give somebody a gali, you'll say, "Are you demented?" So it's not it's not that a dementia patient is. You know, probably it was carrying that stigma, and so. the group of doctors all over the world decided to change it to cognitive disorders so they don't call it dementia anymore the greatest advances now we know it is cognitive disorders and they can be major or minor so they can be major which impact your life and your activities of daily living needing you to be looked after by a caregiver or they can be minor in which you can go about forgetting things but you are totally able to look after yourself and not dependent on another so that has been the first breakthrough the second recent advance is that uh, overall uh, the people who are stakeholders policy holders they have now realized that there is no cure for dementia and what their emphasis has to be is the prevention of dementia so the emphasis has shifted there has been a paradigm shift from cure to prevention and that prevention have they have listed out a number of strategies some of which are listed in the newsletter so if you have the newsletter i have stated the strategies which have been bought out by the uh, the world uh, body of alzheimers disease society as well as the different nations uh, in tackling dementia and the way we can prevent dementia is probably starting out when we are young when we are 30 35 40 45 50 <laughs> so there are these certain things which we need to be aware of which really we have no control over nor the person who has dementia has any control over that is the fact that we age and that is a universal truth the fact that we age is a universal truth so aging is something which we cannot control and hopefully all of us will live till 100 150 uh, but sadly as we age the incidence of cognitive decline also increases and the other is the genetics now we cannot change that also unless uh, you really don't belong to your parents and you belong you are from someone else which could be in the case of adopted children or surrogate children so uh, you know genetics if you have a strong family history of a cognitive disorder then you are genetically prone so genes and aging are two things which we really cannot control but there are several a tight control of blood pressure a tight control of diabetes no smoking and no drinking these are some things which we can be continent off uh, right from a young age okay then of course is the lifestyle and you would be pleasantly surprised to know that many conference seats nowadays in the west are getting replaced no more do conferences have chairs they have standing seats or bicycling seats so sitting is a risk factor for dementia if you sit for 6 to 8 hours sedentary continuously watching television not getting up moving around lack of physical activity passive passive life passive means just watching the tv or just you know not interacting with anything in life that's a risk factor so we have to get up and get active so that's another thing which has been found then of course a diet the best diet is the mind diet which is the mediterranean diet now our diet is somewhat like the mediterranean diet 
in that we have high fiber. Original Indian diet had high fiber with veggies and greens and sprouts and you know yogurt and uh, uh, wheat with bran and jao atta and whatever. But now we've replaced it with maida, which is supposed to be bad, pasta, which is bad. So really you need to have a healthy Indian diet with a lot of haldi in it, which is also supposed to be good for you. Then of course, uh, you are supposed to have the healthy oils, which are your mustard oil, your olive oil, um, and of course your vegetable oils. Um, avoid uh, butter, margarine, and you know, ghee, uh, sorry, dalda. Ghee to a little extent is okay. So then comes the oils. And then comes stress. You really need to come down on your stress. It has been conclusively shown that stress itself clogs your memory. Stress clogs the way you do things. You can imagine all of us have gone through stress and when we are in a stressful phase of our life, you'll find uh, you know, doing little things becomes more and more difficult. We take longer time doing it. We feel more foggy in the brain. So stress is a big thing. Then comes sleep. You have to sleep for seven to eight hours. If you have a good sleep, if you're 70, you're allowed six hours because your sleep reduces as you age. So if you have good sleep, sleep is where your memory consolidates. Your memory kind of strengthens itself. So sleep is essential. And then, of course, the fact that at age, at any age, we should be interactive, outgoing, not neurotic personalities, not negative personalities, uh, be beneficial to the society and community, do whatever we can in our wherewithal, without harming ourselves, to benefit others, a giving nature. And this has been conclusively shown that these personalities who have these kind of personalities are less likely to develop cognitive decline. So this is the other recent advance. It's not just the medical factors. It's your your personality, it's your social factors which also go along in preventing cognitive decline. And last but not the least, something which impacts everybody from Delhi is pollution. It has been conclusively shown that if you are breathing polluted air, you are at a higher risk of cognitive decline. So if you all have any, you know, kind of advocacy skills with the government, with the farmers in Punjab who burn their crop, I think People need to get together to stop this pollution in the beautiful city of Delhi. Otherwise, we should not be proud of calling ourselves as Delhiites, having whatever we have. So these are the recent advances. And there are other recent advances in therapy. You know, we have Donopezil, we have Rivastigmine, and uh, these uh, companies which make the Donopezil and Rivastigmine routinely sponsor our events. I'm thankful to Sun Pharma, which has sponsored this event. They do it every year. So Donopezil and Rivastigmine are the mainstay of therapy. They have to be started as early as possible. Unfortunately, patients come to us when they are wetting their clothes. That's not when you want to start medicines. Why do they come so late? Because in the early stages, the caregiver thinks this is just a part of getting old. It is a part of getting old. So the recent advance is that anybody who's above a particular age of 50 or 60 starts forgetting things which they were never doing in their life. They have to go periodically to a memory clinic. Just like your BP can be monitored, just like your weight can be monitored, the memory clinic is supposed to monitor your weight, uh, your memory. And Dr. Ashima here runs the neuropsychiatry, neuropsychology uh, clinic at uh, Ames Neurology. And she routinely screens our uh, MCI, pseudo dementias, all those patients in a very objective way to tell us whether the person has a cognitive decline or not. So that's the other thing. You have to go in early, just like a BP check, just like a blood sugar test, you have to get your memory screen. There are new medicines which have come. These medicines have very advanced mechanisms of actions, but they're very, very costly. So uh, you rather prevent dementia than, you know, take such costly medicines. They're still not available to us in India, like solanizumab, edicumab. There are so many maps which have come. I'm sure the companies are looking into getting these medicines for us. Okay, so that's the other recent advance. Uh, the last but not the least is of course the fact that the Indian uh, Alzheimer's Disease Society um, has got together in portraying to the health minister the need for a strategy plan for, action plan for persons with dementia. So that's last but not the least. And I'd conclude by saying that we at the ARDSI Delhi chapter desperately need younger people who can act as volunteers, ideally those who have been caregivers to their family members with cognitive decline, helping us with home visits, helping us with counseling patients, especially caregivers. You know, caregivers are at their wit's end. 
the patient can get agitated, the patient can get stubborn, the patient can get abusive, the patient can get lost go out of the house and get lost. So the caregiver needs, needs a lot of non-medical inputs. I can give the medical inputs, Dr. Ashima can do the neuropsychiatry, neuropsychology assessment, depression assessment, but really we can't be doing home visits because we are kind of, if anybody has visited Ames, you would realize what our plight is. So uh, I request all of you, if you have an experience of caregiving, come join hands with us, join hands with our society. We need fresh um, you know, faces and energy with us, um, with experienced team uh, of people who are helping us out at ARDSI. We do need many more new people who can help us uh, you know, heal uh, through training the caregivers. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, I hope uh, I'm, I have been very clear. But if anybody has any questions, I could take them at the end of both the talks. We are doing the questions at the end. Of. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>